I called for silence. That's what happened, if you guys are questioning. Uh, yeah, so we're still waiting on one more guy. So it, I, I think uh, in this one, the, the band, the pick band phase, probably going to look a little different. Honestly, I think the bands might be similar, but I really just want to see Frost play in a little bit of a different style. I think they should just play more aggressive early and just really try and uh, kind of get themselves some sort of advantage and try and hold on to that with their mechanical skill. But uh, of course, Frost, the older team, they're waiting, uh, the new team waiting in the wings is trying to move their way up a little bit. And, uh, What's that? Frost is the yeah, that's what I meant. Frost moving their way up in Azure. Uh, holding strong, though. Holding strong. The old dogs holding on. Though not that old, considering they're all still in college. So, uh, any are, are you losing any players this year, by the way? Are, you, are any of them graduating? I do believe they're all undergrads, so hopefully they will be with us for a little bit longer. Uh, we have tried pretty hard to make these guys not terrible. It's worked out so far, and uh, I hope we can't have to go through that whole process all over again. Once again, guys, this is the University of Toronto League Association's Frost Week Finals. We are in partnership with the, with the University of Toronto Student Union. Those are the guys that hooked you up with the free pizza outside. If uh, any of you guys were on a team, uh, and played in the tournament, you are enter you, you guys do just naturally get $25 RP. So I'm gonna point out a guy, Zijan, are you over here? Can you put your hand up, Zijan? He might be outside, so uh, when he comes in, I'll point him out. And that's gonna be the guy you go talk to to get your $25 RP. Who? Yeah. Nate is welcome to be anywhere he wants. Nate? Oh, uh, if she wants, we'll do some giveaways. She brought like Asus stuff, Asus shirts. Up? Back? Just next time, we'll do it with some giveaways. If we have time to do some trivia right now, we'll do like three or four things of trivia and then give away some Asus stuff. Is that okay? Which way? This way? We're in a champion's life, so. Okay. Is there, um, Is there any way to get game sound? From here? What? what What's not plugged in? If we're, if we're plugged into the projector... Should be already going. Should already have game set. Shut up. Shut up. No, the, there was sound. Oh, yeah. For these guys, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, for these guys. Isn't that going to be difficult for them to hear the game sounds and you at the same time? It's already hard enough on the screen. If we turn the volume this, down. But this... The PA is not great. This, this is the issue. It doesn't matter. We can just adjust it. Like, yeah. We can adjust can it from here because yeah. they hear the volume that we hear, right? Yeah. If we just change it on the desktop, yeah. like su super simple, we just adjust it from the desktop. Yeah. Yeah, but for, for this, yeah, is how the audio will go through. Split it again. I could, but I don't know if that's long enough. That's what she said. By she, I mean Alicia. So you're here in game on. So if I can plug. I made a joke. Here, let's try this. I made a joke. Can this system output both the PA and the audio? Because that's two sources, right? I can only assume it can. Really? I don't know. There's audio settings in the front there. For this moment, well, it's 45 minutes. Oh, Lord. So much delay, it hurts me. Oh, yeah, I know I'm on stream. Probably not. Probably not. I wonder how many viewers we have. We are on stream. We should talk to our chat. How are you guys doing out there? How are you guys doing out there, chat? 
How are you guys doing out there, chat? You guys having a good time? You guys having fun? Look at that little dangle of hair I got there. That's awful. Is it gone? Is it gone? I would, you think I would tell you if it was gone? No, it's still there. Oh. <laughs> I just want to see it. Do you like... Yo, you fucker. <laughs> Watch, this is where I say it's gone. Or it's still there. See, I said it's still there. And then you get <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That is really funny. So, can we do a giveaway or two? So guys, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of some league charades for like two minutes until we get started. So, I'm going to orchestrate this from where I'm sitting right here. So, uh, I'm going to take three people down here. We got some Aces stuff we'd like to give away. I'm going to let our wonderful Aces rep give a little shout out in a minute, but if you guys, uh, let me see that energy. I'm going to pick someone who's got the most energy. So we're going to do league charades, and basically, uh, I'm going to pick one of you guys. It's going to be David, actually, and David's going to have to, uh, I'm going to give him a champion, and he's going to need to imitate it however he may. He needs to convey what champion it is to the other two contestants. Can I, can I pick the champion? Sure. And uh, why don't you guys introduce yourselves, get familiar with each other, and then uh, David, come over here, we're going to give you the champion. You guys can just stand on there. Oh, okay. oh my god, yo! <laughs> okay, so we have got the champion selected, and it's going to be up to whoever does get it first, does get the prize. It's going to be some ace stuff. You guys are going to have to guess who the champion is, so David, take it away. <laughs> He's imitating a champion. <laughs> what? Wow! That was impressive. Nice. This is really impressive. All right. Can we hook him up with some uh, little bit of swag here? You did get that right away. Give me something challenging. Something challenging. How was that? All right. I'll give you. We'll do another one in a minute. That's just so much. That was pretty good. That was impressed. I'm impressed. I will do my best to get you a lanyard. Don't tell anyone. Just bring us down. We are at the Earth Sciences Building. If you guys want to hook us up, I will love you forever. If somebody actually brings you up here. Oh, wow. If somebody actually does that, I'll give you guys a big hug. So we do. Oh, we do have our first winner. So if we can hook him up with something. Sorry, I did jump in front of you guys, but we're gonna do. The next champion, we're gonna do. Uh, I got an idea. Come over here. All right, come on. Give me something challenging. <laughs> Fuck. Whoa! <laughs> hey! Hey! <laughs> Let's keep it PG. It's floppy. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right, all right. No talking. You just gotta. You just gotta give us your best imitation. Oh 
This is for you guys. Wow. Again, this guy needs some sort of prize. Can we hook him up with something? And then we're going to get three more guys to come down here and uh, a new impersonator as well. <laughs> Too good, man. Too good. Too good. <laughs> Too good. <laughs> the new sprinkler dance confirmed. <laughs> Do we have something to give these wonderful gentlemen? Alright, uh, whoever won can stay up here. The rest of you guys can sit down. You will have more chances to win stuff. Just come over tomorrow. She'll hook you up with something. All right, so uh, we need one more person who's maybe not interested in winning something but wants to kind of imitate, and then we need three people who want to win something. You want to imitate? All right, come on down. You'll be our charades leader. And then we need three people who've got that energy again. Let's hear it. For sure you. All right, who else? Who else? I'll take you in the front in the scarf. And the whitish gray shirt, you can come on down and do it as well. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, come on up here. Do you have a shaman out here? Or this. No, I should be doing this. Oh no, except they see it on the thing. It might just be like turned off on the side. Don't close that. Don't close that. That needs to be. Okay. They can see what we're I know. Yeah. Alright. Move on up to the front and then do it, okay? okay. Here we go. What you guys got? That's actually pretty good. That's a good, that's really good. I'm not, I'm impressed. Come on guys, this is obvious. It's so obvious. Come on guys. Oh, come on, that's so obvious. It's a jackal. Come on. Same thing. Just keep doing the same thing. Hey! Nice. Nunu, good job, good job, good job. Who was that? Who guessed the Nunu? Come on up tomorrow at the front. She'll hook you up with an Aces prize. Aces. Alright, whichever one you guys want, go up tomorrow over there. She'll help you uh, get some decent stuff. Alright, I think we got time for at least one more. So we need someone else who wants to imitate. Who's good at this charade stuff? Come on, I need someone. <laughs> David's feeling it again. Does anyone else want to get up here? Uh, you behind the guy in the way. You can come on up. You'll be our, you'll be our charades. Our charades leader. Our challenger charades player. Alright, let's see that energy once again. Three people, let's go. I'll take you right there in the front in the green sweater. If you've already been up, we'll get more opportunities for you guys to win stuff, but uh, if you've already been up, don't. You can give me energy, but I'm not going to pick you. Alright, two more guys. I'll take you in the, in the black sweater shirt thing. One more guys, who again? You in the red, you can come up here as well. Uh, I'm going to give you a champion that you're going to impersonate, and uh, they're going to have to try and guess what it is. But you can't say anything, you can't make any, uh, you can't give them any like, real hints, you just got to act it out. We're uh, slowly deciding what we want here. Okay, I got an idea for you. Alright, here we go. Yeah, if you can come around this way, it'd be better. And then just go to the front. Alright, you guys ready for this? Let's go! Come on up, right up to the front, let's go.
It has to be those guys, not in the audience. Oh. Oh my god. Okay. All right. This is going to be the last one before we hop into the game, guys. So be on your best behavior because you got you got to really pick up the clues here. This is really sensitive information. Oh. Oh, oh. Hey, Diana. I think you said it first. Wow. How did yeah, for sure. That was really impressive. Good job. All right. So come up over to Mara. At the, at the uh, podium here. Let's do this. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm pretty sure we're about ready to get into this game here. I think uh, Frost might be missing their jungler. Melon Time, where are you at, bro? It's Melon Time! It's Melon Time! I just can't him. How are you guys doing out there, though? I really want to hear some noise if you guys think Azure is going to take this game. It was a pretty convincing game one. How about Frost, though? Let me hear it for Frost. Still the fan favorites. I think Melon Time might have a little bit to do with that. You guys, uh, you guys all about that Melon No. No? No. <laughs> We actually are going to be picking an MVP uh, for the entire t for the uh, entire finals, and uh, the winner of that will be getting some Skull Candy headphones courtesy of Razor. So uh, if you guys feel like you have an MVP or a, a fan favorite in mind, feel free to yell their name out as we're in the game if they make a hype play, and uh, we'll decide based on how many times they actually get their name called out. As long as there's some, it's fine. Well, it's just, it's really quiet. No, it's on their end. No. We can turn this up, though. But we're going to use the league sound, so it's yeah. fine. Like, I can... Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's fine. You might have to fidget with that thing. Yeah, we will. Dude, I mashed your food, man. I had at least three. So guys, my name is Muskie Bad. Uh, I am one of the presidents, presidents of the University of Toronto League Association, and uh, I would like to give you guys a little bit of an apology just because we had so many hiccups today, uh, a couple headaches, but uh, I think it's going a lot smoother now, and we still have quite a few things to give away, I believe, so uh, we've got some good stuff in store for you. We've got some ARAM games that most likely are going to happen after this, some viewer ARAM, that kind of thing. So guys, hold tight. We've got a lot of good league action coming down. Shout out to Ray Ram. You're late, big guy. Whoever just called for a Dota Dota game, can we just have him removed? Whoever that was. Security. Security, please. All right, so we are going to be rocking forward into this one. Uh, this is going to be game two, and it is a best of five. They're playing for a full ride scholarship to university. Oh wait, no, no, that's not true, is it? They are playing for some very nice mechanical keyboards and a whole bunch of RP. Uh, a really, really nice mechanical keyboards. All right. This is
This is my friend's computer. I hope he doesn't have anything bad on his uh, on his search history. Here you go, guys. Ten hours. This is it. This is what we're gonna listen to for the next ten hours. So much we have to say. It's the leak theme song, right? <laughs> I want to see everyone headbang with me. Come on. There we go. I got a couple of you guys out there. Whoever's the most aggressive headbanger might win something. <laughs> Come on. Let's see it, guys. Come on. We got, some, we got some arm waving over there. I like it. Nice. I feel like you guys are waiting for me to rap or something now. Probably. Mom Spaghetti. Mom's spaghetti. That's enough of that. I'm really ready to just get into this game. Are we are we getting close, guys? Come on. Could this be any more difficult? Yes. I like how they're finally working with us here. Let's get into the picks and bans, guys. We'll see what is coming out. Of course, this is game two, best of five. A whole lot on the line here. Thresh Bear going out first. All right, so it looks like we're sticking to some pretty standard, uh, standard bans. Pretty much the same thing that we saw from last time. I can only imagine that that Pantheon has to be right at the top of the list in terms of uh, choices, though we will see how these teams play this one out. Uh, we don't want to reveal too much information uh, about some of the champions uh, because they are actually picking live clearly right in front of us so let's try to keep that to a minimum although i do want to make that special prediction uh in terms of the weird champions i know we were going over that last time i i'm i think karthus i think karthus would be an excellent champion uh just because it would be a lot of fun i'm really hoping for maybe a gangplank that'd be pretty awesome or, or Ash would be good. All right, so uh, Thresh LeBlanc, same bands from last time around. So actually, usually when you when you win your first game, you stick to the same bands, and you try to get the same team comp for you because you can use the momentum of the same choices to move yourself forward. But uh, it looks like, ah, and there we go, Pantheon will be banned out. So changing things up a little bit here, but at the end of the day, you still gotta ch you still gotta make a comp happen. So I think Pantheon is a pretty important piece of the puzzle in a, a lot of instances. But in this one, it looks like they're gonna be going for uh, they're gonna get rid of him and Janna banned out as well. So no Janna this time. Uh, that does leave a couple of choices open from the ban phase last time. Jarvin, of course, being one of them, and he is first select on the board right now for Frost. Yeah, not only is Jarvin very strong in the meta right now, he's also Tour's favorite champion, or at least one of them. So, uh, a good idea to pick up that Jarvin first, but like you said, there's not going to be very many junglers left. I wouldn't be surprised if on the flip side we do see something like a, a Graves pick up, and maybe their support as well, of course, because Janna and Thresh are banned out. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be interesting. We've got the Jarvin actually coming in as a lockdown, so great, strong first pick. Honestly, one of the most contested picks in this series. We'll see what the answer is coming out of Azure. Yeah, still, uh, still a lot of strong uh, choices for the jungle, though with Pantheon, Lee Sin, and Jarvan being gone here, I don't know if Nocturne is going to be the way to go, uh, though it was a choice from Frost to pick up Nocturne in the last one, so clearly pretty comfortable on that champion. Though Rumble slipping through the ban phase is going to be picked up here from Azure, and not a bad way to lead off your team. Rumble, one of those champions, a little bit difficult to play, especially when you when you do have to time out that uh, flame spitter. You got to make sure you're facing the right way. You can't turn around and run because you'll lose out on a lot of damage. So um, having him come into this one, not a big shocker if you can play him properly. And Morning Melon about to select Lissandra for his team this time instead of picking up the Cassidy that they had available last time. Do you think we're going to see a lot of differences in the choices for Frost? I really do hope that Frost does go for a more aggressive comp, and we can see that's what they're doing. They need to really pick things that are able to fight right from level 1, level 2, 
And uh, you know, if you look at that Rumble and Graves pick, it just fits so nicely in the style that Azure likes to run. Of course, it doesn't even matter how Rumble really does in that lane. It's going to be a pretty short laning phase. They're going to try and utilize the Rumble ult to try and take advantage of the Dragon and, of course, the fights in the jungle. And Afeva is a god with these Rumble ults. Yeah, uh, definitely going to be a pretty nice AoE comp going forward in this one. Again, uh, though it's going to be on a different side here, so Graves is going to be picked up for Azir this time instead of Frost. So apparently Graves, pretty decent choice for red side. And you know what I noticed we need? We need uh, we need these guys all in like track suits, like matching track suits for your school. I think that's something we should invest in. I gotta sp I gotta talk to your dean. That's definitely I, I think a good way to go. Some uh, varsity blues threads would be nice. Nami picked up in exchange for Frost here. Ooh. Skarner actually coming down. Tour might be in the running for a uh, fan favorite here just on that pick alone. Well, here's hoping that's not a, uh, a placement holder. Like we saw the Blitz crank around last time. This is a little bit depressing to see him let go. But Skarner, um, I gotta say, I haven't really seen too much of him. So speaking of him in a competitive sense is a little bit difficult. What uh, What's he gonna be bringing to the table with a Rumble, Graves, and Morgana? Skarner was changed in the last patch, of course, so he did get a little bit uh, lower mana costs and some things like that that, to be honest, wasn't really the thing that was holding him back. However, in a comp like this, uh, with the Morgana, there's going to be a lot of synergy in terms of picks. I wouldn't be surprised if we actually see something like a uh, Cinder come down as that last pick, potentially. However, we see the Zed being hovered over from Miko, and, I mean, that's a pretty difficult matchup as a Cinder, so it's going to be hard to tell. Uh, a lot of mixed damage coming out from the side of uh, University of Toronto Frost. Yeah, and like you said, that level 1 fight potential from Frost, level 2, level 1, just super early aggression, that's definitely the way they're going here. Zed, Corky, Corky, one of the highest damage dealing champions, or AD carries in the game right now from the low levels. So seeing him come out in this one, definitely not a surprise, and he's going to be paired up with Nami. If you can get that Nami bubble down, which we saw how uh, how well those were being landed last time around, especially against a Lucian sliding all over the place and hovering over the crab dot, I have full faith that this is exactly what they wanted. As we do take a look at the Azure team, you notice that they are actually very based around those level six. They kind of all need to get their ultimates before they fight. So in reality, there is. Quite a oh! Anivia locked in. Okay, so that's actually another example of a, a weaker early champion. And uh, <laughs> this is basically just the perfect opportunity for Frost to come back. They've got such aggression uh, advantage over Azure in these early levels. So we're going to see how they play it out. Apparently, your audience isn't aware of the strength of jungle Anivia. Uh, <laughs> You need to get cultured here, folks, in the, in the jungle game. No, but we are going to be seeing the Skarner slip over to the jungle role. And Anivia mid, now I know uh, clearly a pretty popular Anivia player, uh, Froggen. So he likes to build a, a huge, huge mana pool, a lot of mana regen before really moving forward with the damage with Anivia. Do you think that that's the way to go with the current meta? Do you think we're going to be seeing a lot of that in the build for Anivia this time around? Honestly, it's not a bad matchup for Anivia. We're going to have to kind of guess and see what summoner spell he is going to take. Uh, and that's going to just kind of be an indication of how he actually wants to play that lane. So actually locking in that Ignite means that he's going to want to go for that early fighting. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a Rod of Ages and Tear build, that sort of thing. Uh, just very good. It, it's more of a team fight comp with that Anivia. They picked it up looking for the control, but it also helps with the pick, of course, the CC lock with the Morgana, with the Skarner. A lot of magic damage, however, coming out from the side of U of T Azure. Yeah, and by the way, I don't know if it was stressed enough, but uh, this was a full-blown tournament, and the top two teams coming out of this one are the teams that are going to be representing the University of Toronto in any collegiate uh, 
any collegiate tournament in the future. So whoever comes out on top of this one, I can only assume is going to be clearly named the A team, the go-to team to register for these tournaments. And those tournaments are no joke. They do actually offer quite a bit uh, in terms of sometimes scholarships, things like that. So pretty good stuff. Yeah, guys, you can't forget about actually the Riot Run Collegiate Tournament as well. The North American Collegiate Champions. Uh, schools like UBC have done very well, uh, gotten pretty far, and actually made quite a bit of money. And I think that's kind of what we're hoping to do here, too. This is basically uh, going to be a good indication of which team will be able to represent Toronto, uh, University of Toronto, on a global scale. So after this is all said and done, do you feel like we could see a University of British Columbia versus University of Toronto East Coast versus West Coast show match? I would absolutely love to see that happen. Uh, I mean, University of Toronto hasn't played in that many collegiate tournaments outside of the Ontario area, so these guys really do need to get their name out there, and uh, UBC needs to get taken down a peg or two. I think there's some shots being fired right now. I think there's shots fired across the great distance of Canada. Uh, so here's hoping anyways, that would definitely make for a great show. I would cast that for sure. I would cast that. I, I would watch that as a, a spectator as well. All right, so we're 49 seconds into, uh, waiting to come into this one. And I gotta mention again, you've got Biofrost taking Ignite in the bottom lane. I don't know how effective I would say that it was last time around on a Janna. Do you think it's gonna be more effective on Morgana and they're pairing it with Graves again, so they clearly want some aggression. You think it's going to play out a little bit better for them? Honestly, Biofrost is just so aggressive all around the map. And I mean, he just, it just allows them to use that Ignite to really just kind of take that early advantage. Exhaust doesn't help get those kills at level 1, level 2 very much. It just kind of slows somebody down. And uh, UT Azure is just all about that burst, if you know what I'm saying. And uh, I'm really excited. Five seconds we get into this game. Game number two between University of Toronto Azure taking on University Frost. Here we go. I'm a little bit let down by the lack of Urgot. I'm a little bit let down. You're just pulling on my heartstrings now. But. Uh, all right, so one more time, I got to mention the fact that uh, we were provided with quite a bit of decent stuff from Aces just now. We've also got Red Bull on the roster for our sponsors. You've got the uh, University of Toronto Student Association up. and Gamebox. So pretty awesome sponsors. I don't think so. Maybe it's pretty no, awesome skins rocking into this one no, as well. I nudged this with my foot. Yeah. Okay, but I don't see where it came out of. Is that okay? How about you just? All right, so again, I'm going to ask you here, Muskie, is there any lane matchup that you think particularly is going to go one, clearly one, one direction? I'm going to pretend that never happened. All right. But That's fine. I think actually the biggest advantage isn't even, or disadvantage, disparity rather, isn't actually even going to be in the in the lanes. I think it's going to be in the jungle. It is Morning Melon going against that Skarner. And uh, I think it's really up to him. He needs to kind of put his team in a position to uh, just start the snowball, as it were. Uh, Shoutouts to the Nunu, uh, who is up here in front of the stage, snowballing the game already. All right, so everybody kind of lining up here. They're going for, it looks like on the side of Azura, they want to go a little bit more passive here. They're going to spread out across the river. Actually, same thing for Frost. Nobody wants to take any risks here. Though uh, Miko meets Viper in the mid lane. Everybody lashing out there. And by the way, if you, uh, if you happen to be ranked around Platinum 4, please don't take your time shopping. Just in case you end up in a game with me, please don't take me time. I'm all about that level one invade life. Uh, speaking about level one invades, not gonna be happening here. Wards across the map, just checker pattern across here. And a ward is placed here for Frost. They see what's going on, they see the invade. I don't know how effective this is gonna be, but Jarvan's gonna move across the map. They ping that there's gonna be a ward there, but they just drop a couple wards for themselves for Azir. Taking, again, a little bit more of a passive approach. 
I mean, that's exactly what they've done the last game, and it didn't work out for them. And once again, Azure gets that early vision. You saw how it reacted last time, what came of it, and uh, I'm a little bit worried from Frost here, just taking that back seat once again. Yeah, we are looking for Frost to come out in this one, hopefully put on some early aggression. Still can do so in the laning phase. I don't think Anivia is going to have that much fun in the early games here. Let's see what she started with. It does look like a Doran's Ring, so she's going to have a little bit of mana regen for herself and a little bit of extra damage, though I can't see her sustaining all that well or out farming a Zed in the early phases, stages of this game. Taking down Golems at level 1 and being helped out with the Golems up at the top side is Skarner. Rum's going to be helping him out there. And Lissandra helping out with a blue start for Jarvan. A little bit interesting. Let's see where his jungle pattern takes him for that level 1, or sorry, for the early ganks. Quite a few minions actually missed by the side of Frost here as well. I don't know if that was worth it. Of course, that Morgana with the Ignite. Gonna put a lot of pressure down into that bottom lane. You can see how low they are already. AC just right in their face. This is the double lift of Toronto. Let's be honest. AC is a huge player. Let's see how these guys do in the bottom lane. Yeah, and you can see Biofrost just using his W to try to get a little bit of extra gold uh, farmed up from his items here. And actually, a bubble goes out. Level two hits. Lots of damage on the AC. AC sliding in though. Gets exhausted. What's gonna happen here? There's one more auto attack. Summoner heal gets popped, and Omega B and UB Insta actually somehow losing out on the the exchange overall. They're both below half HP. And Graves AC here saving that Summoner heal to the last second. Really well played on his part. Great communication from that bottom lane of Azure, knowing that they were going to hit level 2 as well. Not afraid to fight as well, and if that Binding had landed, it definitely would have been a different story. Jungler is finishing up their second buffs right here. Nothing too crazy going on, uh, except for that bottom lane. Everywhere else around the map seems pretty tame, and honestly, that is in the favor of the University of Toronto Azure. They've got the power spikes at level 6 that uh, they really just don't have in the early game. Yeah, one of the problems I'm going to see on the, uh, in, in terms of these lane matchups as well, I was talking about the Zed versus Anivia, and clearly we've seen a lot of that bottom lane. The smart cam just cannot get away from them. There's so much action going on there. But A.E. Faba, I think if he makes it to level 6 without being hindered too much on his farming, you can see he's already down about 5 CS. It's going to be really tough for him to make it there, but once he hits that 6, Rumble is just going to completely dominate that top lane. That matchup is really, really heavily favored uh, if he can get to that stage. Looking to see Jarvan make a play here in the bottom lane. Bubble hits AC. Jarvan's there. Oh, and AC goes down. First blood for Omega B jumping in. Biofrost super low as well, taking the red buff. But uh, saves Flash at the end of it. Really well played there from Morning Melon. Look at that mid lane. Viper hasn't even actually forced a pot out of Nico. Anivia has a very weak early game. Uh, part of the reason that I did expect to see Jarvan go into the opposing jungle, but a kill in the bottom lane is just as good. Getting a kill is uh, just the first part of the game, though we've seen Frost play so well from behind and just come back off a single map rotation. So, like I said, it is Frost's game to win. Yeah, and starting things out here, Corky not only with a kill above Graves, but 31 to 17 CS now, and Graves being forced to buy that second Doran's Blade, whereas Corky goes back and immediately builds into his Trinity Force here. He's got the first portion of it down with that Phage, and uh, we all know what happens when Corky finishes up that Trinity Force. Tons of damage ensues. Great job by Jarvan to get that early vision down just to keep his Zed safe and so he can continue bullying that mid lane Anivia. Viper low health does have his egg available still but you can't forget how much damage that Zed will do if he's able to auto attack you. Cleared out by Biofrost most likely though they do spot that ward not even a minute lasted on it. Yeah, and uh, Anivia actually with one of the longest auto attack ranges in the game. Still not going to be helping him out too much as he is taking quite a beating. He's popped his last potion here. Biofrost, really nice snare into the tormented soil, but it's not going to be enough, obviously, to uh, start up and engage onto Nami. Though Morgana actually spotted out here. This is going to lead to some aggression in the bottom lane once Nami gets down there. And in the top lane, Rumble going hard. UB Insta, AC not seeing what's going on. Slides over the bubble, though. Mia super low, uh, going after AE Favor, but he needs the cooldowns. 
Waits it out. One more auto attack. Mia takes it down. Gloss got two kills and a thousand gold. Miko fighting in the mid lane here, going after Viper, but does not commit. Level 6 ultimates coming out around the map. Morning Mill and Action finding Squirt in the jungle. There is a level disparity. Will they fight? Yeah, it looks like Nia is going to be right around the corner here. He knows that Rumble's dive teleport comes out, though. They're going to chase them away from this one. Flashing forward, there's the bubble going on to AC. Pops the Q. Down he goes. Omega B with another kill under his belt. Everybody top lane makes it out okay, but UB Insta leading the charge here for Omega B. And they're pausing to celebrate their kills, guys. Leave them alone. We really need to look at how much work Morning or Morning Melon has done this game. The disparity. I mean, Tour just can't really gang until he's level six. Whereas Jarvan's been all over the map, helping out his team, creating pressure. And I mean, that's what happened in the bottom lane. Once you get an advantage with the Quirky and Anami, you just start to scale out of control right away. If I could only land, I I think UB Insta has landed more bubbles than I've literally ever landed as Nami, like, combined. Uh, I don't play Nami that often, to be fair, but uh, this guy is so on point with those things, it's ridiculous. Uh, Rumble pushes up that top lane, and we've got uh, Nia not using teleport, so he's just gonna use the E to speed things up to get back to lane. Uh, pretty bold move, considering he's gonna lose out on quite a bit of CS, and Rumble heads down towards the mid lane. Miko, I think Viper needs to bait this one out, though. He goes pretty low, and A, Fava, gonna get a little bit of da damage down. Uh-oh! And he turns it around, Miko looking for the kill. He's gonna not Oh! Down goes Miko though, really well played from A Favor. Grabs himself a kill, and he's actually not that far behind uh, CS from Lissandra also. I think that helps out Anivia more than anything, honestly. She probably isn't going to be able to go for that tier first, most likely going for something defensive, maybe even a, a catalyst early. But good roam already uh, from the bottom and the top laner coming towards that mid lane to help Viper out and give him a little bit of breathing room. Yeah, speaking of breathing room, Nia about to get collapsed on here. Skarner right up in his face, forces out the flash, but he jumps in. He wants that grab, and Nia's about to go down here. Pops the ultimate, Morning Melon's there to turn things around, but it's not going to be enough. Nia's going to go down very quickly here, and he picks up that kill for himself. Rumble in the top lane turning things around two kills so this is the question has jarvin done enough in the first six levels of the game to keep his team ahead skarner is level six you can see just how decimating those ganks are and especially with the way that university of toronto azure controls their visions skarner is going to create tons and tons of pressure every single time his ultimate is up look for him to pick up maybe some boots of mobility to just get around the map and just kind of exert himself everywhere he can yeah, he's going to be moving very, very quickly, and that's, of course, one of the great benefits of Skarner. If you can get in their face, you're pretty much going to lock in that kill, so he wants to move as quickly as possible. Uh, possibly even going to be building himself towards uh, a more tanky build here. He does have two Ruby Crystals. Could be potentially building a Trinity Force. I actually wouldn't be surprised if he goes for the new item, which is uh, very reminiscent of Shirelia's. I believe it's called uh, Righteous Fury. It works like Shirelia's, except it also slows you down, so he can go in, grab someone, pop that, and then pull himself right on out. Yeah, not a whole lot of fun dealing with a Skarner moving that quickly, just wrapping you up and pulling you towards his team. Uh, not a whole lot of fun there, but uh, either way, we've got bottom lane. Still trying to farm up for, for Graves here. Gets himself back into the game. He was down very early, about 20 CS, and he's now ahead. Pretty impressive stuff considering the item difference. Viper in trouble here. Uh-oh, and Zed going hard there. The Ignite with the ultimate's gonna pop the egg, but that's not gonna be enough to kill Anivia, and that's one of the, obviously, the, the great benefits of playing Anivia is you don't die all that easily. Once again, we see Biofrost out of lane. AC left alone down there. Tour looking for a pick. His ultimate is up now. He could be looking for that Jarvan. And speaking of Anivia, something that we need to point out pretty quickly is that if she does get interrupted while she's channeling, channeling her ult, things like bubbles, things like tidal waves, knockoffs from Jarvan, it really does hamper her damage quite a bit. So Viper will need to be on, on, the, on the ball with his positioning. Yeah, and Skarner, speaking of on the ball, he's going to be on the ball with these ganks up in the top lane. He's lining up yet another one. Lissandra, not the easiest person to gank, but at the end of the day, 
Tour has been all over this, and in fact, with Rumble pushing here, I think he's going to have to back off. But Dragon number one being attempted. With the advantage that we see coming out of Frost bottom lane, you can see just how much better they're doing with their vision. Mid lane, a, four, a flash to actually force out by Viper, so good job by him, really taking advantage of that matchup. But this is going to be the first Dragon once again actually going over to University of Frost. Yeah, and a really bold move, by the way, because they did not have Smite available for that. They just blasted that down pretty quickly. And UB Insta, uh-oh, Biofrost catches three with the ultimate, but he's going to get blasted. He does land that stun, and the teleport from top lane is going to dis uh, disperse everybody. Miko in the mid lane getting forced back here by the Rumble ultimate. That means no Rumble ultimate for the a potential fight that would break out. But I got to say, great fighting here from Frost. But he's gonna get locked up. Viper picks up the kill for Tour. Looks like Viper is maxing his wall second, which is a great strategy when you're trying to find these picks in the jungle. Of course, that is the play style of University of Toronto Azure, but they have made quite a significant mistake when you consider that they actually gave up a dragon as a team that has Rumble. So definitely gonna need to look at hopefully reinforcing their bottom lane down here. They're going to need a little bit of help unless uh, they can sort of kind of climb back this uphill battle. It's definitely going to be a lot of work here. Um, the, the lead isn't too huge, but the fact that there is a dragon under the belt of Frost right now, that 8% damage increase is so big. Um, it's always that first dragon that starts setting the, the pace here. Um, in fact, a, a lot of games are being di dictated by that now. So we'll see if that does play a major factor. Lissandra is up in the top lane trying to farm that out. And one major factor as well is they took that dragon without losing that top turret like first game. Leandre's format finished for Aveva. This is his build of choice. Really just likes rushing it and trying to make his ult as powerful as it can be to her. Going to be looking around that top lane once again, putting a lot of pressure on Aenea on that Lissandra. Yeah, and like I said, Aveva, Always wanting to fight here up against the Lissandra. He's got a lot of damage under his belt, like you were mentioning, and he just wins the exchanges. That's what he does as Rumble against Lissandra. And Nevia finishing her Rod of Ages significantly quick, to be honest. Uh, usually you see that come out around 14 minutes, 14 minutes, 30 seconds, so he's going to start stacking that very early, and of course that's going to help against the Zed, who uh, doesn't really look like he has the burst potential at this point. Yeah, I, I think everything taking a little bit of a low right now. I gotta say though, Anivia being very, very impressive here. Viper um, not playing Zed this time, so a very, very different play style from the last game. I know it can be a little bit difficult to adjust to um, just the mindset that you have to go about these fights when you go from somebody like Zed into Anivia. But uh, Miko jumping onto Viper here, I don't think that's enough. The Ignite plus the Ultimate, yeah, definitely not enough. Uh, several hundred health still left on Viper. And in fact, he's got a favor to back him up now. There's the slow, gonna go down, and he doesn't have the Ultimate. Oh, he does, but he's overheating. Oh, and down he goes. He decides not to use the ult, the Biofrost there to pick up the assist. That is the Ignite on that Morgana. That's his play style, man. He loves diving those towers, getting in there, helping his team pick up those skills. So good play by Biofrost. Gonna look to try and take advantage of that uh, disparity in champion presence and try and get some vision back for their side of the team. Yeah, now uh, red buff online here for Jarvan, who is slightly behind the Skarner in terms of items. Went for a little bit more damage for himself, where Skarner went the tanky route on that jungle item. We'll see which way is the correct way to go in this game. Skarner, though, has that uh, level 3 boots, the boots of swiftness, plus 3 movement speed. We'll see if he's going to be able to utilize those. Uh, he hasn't really been too aggressive recently, though. I don't think he's used more than one ultimate this game. Yeah, it looks like he's definitely having a little bit of trouble finding somewhere to gank. Fave, on the other hand, has been all over this map, down towards that mid lane several times now. And, uh, I mean, and Anivia is just so good as it gets into the late game as well. You can never really push on her. She's just such a good champion. And you can tell Viper knows what he's doing by the way he uses his wall. Yeah, not to mention, it's just like the Jace-EQ uh, combo, where if you fire the Q first before the E, it's slightly more efficient, and it's a, a little bit of a better uh, macro in terms of how you use your skills. 
Anivia, same uh, same concept. Actually, finds Miko doesn't toss out the E though. Not enough damage behind. Oh! A little bit of bushwhacking there for uh, A. Fava. Takes himself a kill. Rumble in the jungle. A. Fava just beasting this game. 4 1 0. And you can see he's so on point with those alts. Obviously, he's going to go for that Leandris first. Smart pickup by him. And once again, we see AC alone in the bottom lane. Biofrost here, though. Might look for something. Does it the binding middle of that Valkyrie. But he will be safe underneath that tower. Tour finds a Yubi in the jungle. Yeah, and he's going to go hard on this one. He's still got the movement speed, though. Slows him down with the smite, pulls him back, and Yubi insta instantly dropped by the Zenivia. And this is the same thing we saw to Frost last time. They got to regroup. They got to make sure do not get picked in the jungle. I know you got to get the wards down, but you got to do it safely. And that's one of the toughest things to do as a full five team. And if you let this Anivia get these items early, I mean, it just, oh, Omega going in. Yeah, maybe not the best choice, but it does turn around. AC going super low, gets smited. In comes Nia. Biofrost goes down. Tua gets ulted. A huge fight. There's a teleport from A. Fader doesn't have ultimate online. Morning now and though a little bit too hard there. In comes Viper. Gonna pick himself up a nice kill on Tania. And just the turnaround potential. I, I thought 100% Frost is gonna walk away with that one. Little bit of a turnaround though. UV in trouble here, trying to get the bubble down, but that is the Liangri 6, 1, and 1 on Faba on that rumble. Mid tower going down to Miko, but I don't think he's going to be able to find much more this game. He's 0-3, hasn't really have much in the way of items, and I mean, if you see Anivia, she's actually moving up towards that death cap or something similar. Not going to be an easy matchup for this Zed. He uh, is going to get punished so hard everywhere he goes. There's not a lot of outplay potential against an Anivia. Yeah, definitely not. Um, again, a pause. Everybody needs to regroup. Uh, I think at the end of this game, we uh, we might have to hold these teams back. They're just at each other's throats right now. Six to nine, the kill count. Very, very close to uh, very, very close to a kill a minute. Things are getting bloody here, guys. <laughs> and I think I think this might be. A little bit of a longer pause. <laughs> Jackson's having a mental breakdown. That's okay, though. You never know what's going to happen at a League of Legends event. This stuff coming out of left field. I could make a pretty good guess. I don't know what's happening. He's back, guys. Ready to uh, crush some nerds. <laughs> oh, just get a nose. Get a nose, please. <laughs> okay. So while you guys wait, we're going to give away more free stuff. He's so free. I, like, I just went in. They just dropped him, they dropped him right in the middle. It's like a microphone. We share everything. Okay, so apparently we're just supposed to talk. 
boss was just us talking, man. I think they could probably hear them from that the mic. Considering how good quality this microphone is. Yeah. And nobody wants to even... When you can look at that, why would you want to look at this? I like what you going on there, though. That's nice. This is my resting position. Ah. Is this what you do at home? If I'm not using the headphones... This is how I read audiobooks. I just let it go right to the brain. Why... Why... <laughs> Why pass through the ears? It just goes right to your brain. Uh, I have so much I could say about this Anivia. Do you remember the last time that you saw me play Anivia? It was in the Solo yeah, you, Hero Tournament. You got it was owned. the first time that we ever like casted together, and the first time you'd ever seen me play. And uh, I played against the Kale, and like missed the first wave, and came back and just got rocked under tower. Yeah. Couldn't do anything. The lag was pretty bad, but that's not why I lost. Regardless, what did you just say? The light, then why would you even mention it? Because it was it was there. You're upset. Uh, <laughs> I don't like losing on my champions, man. I have very few champions that I actually call my own, but Anivia is one of them. Shaco's another. You know, I actually forged a ring that uh, is engraved. It says Salty Kid. I think I'm gonna have to get that back and give it to you. That. W <laughs> I feel like you should give that to your girlfriend, maybe. Yeah. I think she's been waiting long enough, Frank. She wants you to move on up, oh. take it to the next level. Wow, I get it. <laughs> Marriage, salty kid. I just don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> I'll sub in my... What do you my, think uh... that stone says? Here, let's show what I'm talking about. What do you think this says? Five, Can you see me? three, two, one! Yeah! Happy New Year! Okay, so <laughs> I can honestly say I've had to go into a pause for that exact reason, but that's pretty cool. Uh, the pressure a little bit intense here, apparently. Uh, Minion takes out a turret, and uh, that's going to be turret number two here in favor of Frost. And uh, now they're going to be moving down towards the Dragon Pit. They catch Scar in a red-handed, a red clawed rather. Two are going really low here. Nia is there as well. And Frost pushing back here. <laughs> Neither mid laner is there, and of course there is no Scuttle Crab up right now. Looks like uh, we're gonna see Frost back down here. They did miss their initiation, so. Okay, nobody's allowed to go home. Everybody stays. Zed is going to go towards the mid lane, but uh, he's still within range to, to make sure that he's there for that fight. Biofrost looks for a pick. He's going to pick up a ward here, though. Unfortunately, that pink ward stays alive with one HP. Not a good sign. They've got another pink ward down here, and to her nose, he's played the jungle long enough. When you have vision control, you just go for it, man. 2800, 2200. It's dropping quickly. 1700, 1300, 900. Where's the smite? Blue team steals it. Here comes a fight. Tua holds on to Nia, but goes down, and uh, Rubble picks himself up two kills. Miko has to back out. At the end of the day, it's a two for one, but the Dragon Steal from Jarvan is going to put this in Frost's favor. Bubble slows him down, and AV, AV Faber leading the charge, but he's not going to pick up too much. Way, way, way too aggressive from Viper there. Really bad positioning, honestly. Uh, he used his wall already, used his stun already, and I guess just didn't think there was a whole amount of people backing up that Nami. He uh, gets knocked up, and once his ultimate is canceled, when he's got those skills on cooldown, he's a sitting duck, or a sitting cryo phoenix. Uh, <laughs> definitely, I mean, it's just all the power that they have in that mid lane was just gone instantly, and they didn't have the team fight control that they really rely on this comp. Everyone else is sort of based around their ultimates, and they don't have sustained damage except for that Anivia, so... For those of you who weren't aware of the most recent patch, yes, that is a ramp that you can go down now. <laughs> Myself included, I was not aware of that, but that's okay. All right, so a big wave pushing into the bottom lane here. And you've got three characters down there to defend. Everybody just kind of taking their time on this one, regrouping. Where are the objectives here? Where do you want to go as either team? I just want to say real quickly, I think uh, Riot enlisted the help of Tony Hawk on that newest ramp. They uh, brought him in, just, you know, gave his opinion on it, and it worked out pretty nicely. You can see uh, if you get Aurelia over there and she can do her emote and go down onto her blade, it'll be like skateboarding down the ramp. It's perfect. I love it. That was adorable. 
really, really adorable. Uh, Yubi Insta, holding on to those creeps. He doesn't want his team to lose out on any of those. What a good guy support. I would have farmed him in a second. I, I wouldn't have even hesitated. Those would have been mine. I would have bubbled him. I would have altered him. I don't even care. I would have taken those. Let's take a look at the vision control difference. Even Viper has got a red ward, a red trinket, cleaning out the vision that uh, Frost is trying to hold on to. But just look at that map control coming up from Azure. It doesn't even matter if they lost the last fight. They go right to it and they get it right back. Look, it's just, it's so hard for Frost to really keep themselves ahead in this game, no matter if they're winning these team fights or not. I feel like the Scuttle Crab is related to Skarner in some way. I was watching him hit that thing and I was just like, something feels wrong about this. It's like he's beating up on his cousin or something and just like massacres him. That's a, that's a little unfair, I think. That was adorable. <laughs> Alright, so we got a push coming in here. AC! Whoa! I'm, I'm just gonna say, I don't know. And uh, Nami's singing that one through. I have no idea what just happened. What's happening up here? Uh, Miko gets locked up, but he ults and then jumps away. Shadow Dash, is it going to be enough? Miko survives Zanya, so he turns over the tower damage to Tour. And actually, Lissandra going deep here, pops the W. And does a mega B double kill. Donkey dump for Jarvan. Massive turnaround, and that, I gotta say, was all Miko to start that off. Once again, Beba overheats and isn't actually able to get his ultimate down. That's the third time I've seen him do it in this tournament twice this game. Uh, a little bit of miscalculation just on his heat levels. Bites him and his team in the butt as they overcommit for that kill. And now we see Frost doing the right thing, trying to get back the vision control on the map, clearing out those pink wards, hopefully moving their wards up. Trying to set up a split push scenario with Miko, but he's low and Viper's here. I I also don't know about that one. That was a little bit too quick. Uh, yeah, it just kind of comes out of the woodwork there. Viper finds himself in the top lane and he finds Zed. So nice kill there. Gets the, the frost there with the E. And uh, everybody just kind of chilling. Glissandra's going to go back now. And take a look at Anivia's build, actually, because they do have so much pressure with their APs. Those are the winning lanes. She very smartly goes for that Void Staff second. And uh, how do you feel about that Scuttlecraft kill, Frank? It's <laughs> it just looks like an older brother just pounding on a younger brother. I just can't get over it. It's not, it's not fair. But, all right, I'll, I'll forgive Skarner for now. I think I'm just going to call CAS after this. Um, okay, so looking at the map right now, you've got three towers to two. If you're Frost, you've got uh, you've got a momentum, you've got a gold disadvantage, but you, it looks like they have momentum. Where do you go from here? They really need to work as a unit and kind of just use that Zed split push. I think it's kind of really their only option. Again, they, they play team fights so well but it's not necessarily the strength of their comp. It's more of like that catch, pick, and chase down comp. So I think that's what they're gonna be looking for in these games. But once again, they just get their vision taken over almost immediately from Azure. Yeah, and you can see everybody lining up in this mid lane. When in doubt, group mid. Throw it down there, look for the team fight. There's a bubble too! Flashes the bubble and tries to get his hands on Lissandra. That was dicey stuff there. This is going to be a very big fight around the dragon. All the ultimates are available. This is going to be explosive. Top wave is pushing. Not a big deal though. Not going to create any sort of pressure. Bottom wave actually pushing the other direction. Oh, Viper's in front again. UB Insta forced to the back lines. Massive oh. the ultimate. Darwin gets in the middle of the fray, but Biofoss with a huge stun. Legendary for a favorite double kill for him, picks up the Jarvan, and now Tour is trying to find himself a, a Corky, but he ends up getting killed. That's no jungler now alive for this uh, Dragon, but it looks like it doesn't matter. Red Team picks that one up. Massive, massive kills there, and Rumble, I gotta say, what a god. 
Yeah, I mean, you really can't fight against a Rumble in the Dragon area, let alone a 10-in-1 Rumble, who's got Zonia's already. Of course, Skarner did have his Righteous Glory there as well. I mean, there's just too many power spikes, it seemed like, coming out of uh, Azure, and they played it well enough that they didn't die that time around. I mean, Viper was very, very close to getting caught out again. Jarvan just missed him with the Flag and Drag. And then uh, a Jarvan ultimate, which kind of prevented his team from falling up, followed by that massive, massive rumble up from Faber, just solidified another Dragon and uh, another increase in the advantage for University of Toronto Azure. All right, so Red Buff goes down here and uh, Miko just pounding down on this bottom turret. They do find that one, and Graves and Skarn are just not getting there in time. So now the towers is the towers are even right now, 11 to 15 though. Azure, uh, and I gotta say, even still with the gold deficit in that last fight, I think Azure has picked up a little bit of momentum here. But I think it's a, it's kind of on a knife's edge right now. It's pretty balanced. I, I can't say who's got the momentum, but I'm definitely looking forward to the next fight. With no exhaust on the side of Azure, it's kind of hard to think what they can do to this Zed. Uh, but if they do catch him up with a Skarner ultimate, he won't be able to do much. Miko getting caught right away. Yeah, he's going to get pulled in here, but he pulls the ultimate onto AC, dashes back. Meanwhile, Viper, another mid lane gets caught out. So much burned on him there. That's going to be a Mega V, unstoppable. Miko gets chased down here. There's a kill. Chasing forward, though, Morning Melon is super low right now, and they have to back off of this one. Rumble, though, is... I think he's hungry right now. He's going to get turned on. Lissandra jumps in. Morning Melon. Zanya's at the perfect time. Firefrost. Morning Melon goes down. Legendary. Omega B. Firefrost gets killed. And Tour there to back up. But he's not got enough damage to go hard on this one. A fine trade overall coming out from the side of University of Toronto Frost. And uh, Omega B getting really, really big. And honestly, Probably the best thing that could happen in this game for Frost. They need to rely on that consistent damage from the back line. There's not really a whole lot they can dive on to Corky this game. He's, of course, such a safe AD carry. And uh, if his team can create enough pressure and he can just kind of do deeps from the back line, avoid the ultimate from Graves, avoid the ultimate from uh, Skarner and Rumble, he should be okay. He's picked up a quick silver sash, which is exactly what he needed. I was just about to say that. So now he will be pretty much invulnerable to any Skarner gank or uh, pick onto him. So really, really smart pick by him. Uh, item upgrade, rather. All right, so Miko takes down a nice uh, pick board for himself. And everybody just kind of lining things up. So apparently, the name of the game now is who's going to get the most picks. Uh, a favor, though, 11, 1, and 2. That is horrifying. He's actually, if we take a look at the gold count right now, 10,900 gold for him. Next back is uh, Anivia with that 217 CS. 10,400 now. And on the opposite end, leading the whole game, Corky 6-0-6 six, six, with 11,500 gold. Absolutely massive. And honestly, I don't think the gold is on the right people for the side of uh, Azure. Unfortunately, it's just all gone to Rumble. And he can't really do much more with these items. It's all about the alt, and if you avoid it, you avoid it, you know? So... We'll have to see if somehow he can make uh, just as much presence as possible on that champion. But I would have really liked to see those kills go over to Viper or even Tour to be a, a bigger front line. Yeah, so one problem that we're going to be facing here for Frost is the fact that Zed is no longer in the fray here. You can see Skarner. He knows that he's going to get uh, spotted out by a ward if he goes near that um, new Wraith camp. But Zed apparently thinks it's a good idea to stay up top. He's putting on a lot of counter pressure, forcing a lot of Azure up to the top. I think that's a smart way to go. Meanwhile, Nivea just kind of farming bottom. Bit of a low here, but look at the ward coverage for Azure. Really, really good. Honestly, I think Frost is just trying to get Zed into this game and let their quirky scale up as well. They feel confident that they will be able to out-team fight Azure, and honestly, they're in a pretty good spot right here. The game is very even. Uh, if they can kite it out into the late game and their quirky continues to grow, he could be the real factor in this game that changes things up. And like I said, they're just putting Zed up there just to get farmed. It's going to be mostly about the team fights this game. You can't really push on an enemy yet. And the next dragon's coming in one minute. This is going to be a battle for the vision once again. Look at all the sweeper sound on both teams. Yeah, there's no more warning trinkets. Got to buy your wards this time around to uh, if you want to get some coverage down. 
So everybody kind of chipping in their own parts. A lot of wards you can see on the side of Azure, and they're apparently waiting out another dragon fight here. This could be one of the longer games. They're not really pushing objectives too hard here. Every tier two turret is still alive, and they've been alive for a very long time. Bear with me, guys. I am going to try and turn up the game sounds. Nothing's going to happen right now, so give me a sec. Whoa. Whoa. Hey, oh, hey. Hey. Forget it. We're good. Nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. Oh, we missed the ace. Dang. All right. Okay, so uh, I do think that there's going to be some pressure pretty soon, though. You've got Graves. Working his way up the river right now, and Lissandra's nowhere to be found. She does have her teleport online, so I think she's safe to be down there. But uh, Ping's going down onto Dragon here. There could be a turnaround for Baron, though. If, for, if somebody attempts Dragon, the whole team goes, Baron could be a factor. Yeah, like I said last game, this is the new Baron. It's a lot easier. Uh-oh, look, uh, look at Zed moving towards the top lane. They're going to go for the Dragon here. Is this going to be a fair trade? We'll have to see Rumble actually deciding to go, not knowing where to go. There's also the mid-push. Nico's going to be able to pick up this tower easily, and uh, Graves actually going towards the bottom lane. This could be a fight in the mid. Ooh, that wall not quite catching anybody out. Really, really close, but just nudges them forward. And Zed picks up tier two. I would actually take. I'm not, actually I'm not sure tier two versus in that top lane. After that long of having tier two alive, it kind of creates more value on it because it, it opens up a lot more map pressure that you never had before, and the enemy team doesn't have so. With that dragon going down, that's going to be a couple of buffs, yes, but I'll, I'll take the map control. Yeah, it will just create more opportunities for him to uh, set up those picks as well as create vision control around that Baron. We'll see if there's going to be a fight here underneath this tower. Everyone's there. Yeah, unfortunately, not a whole lot of engage coming out here from the side of Azura. They've got a little bit more gold. Uh, one of the problems, though, is if Rumble gets blasted down, and there is a lot of AOE, or sorry, a lot of single target burst here from the side of uh, Frost. If they can blast Rumble down, it's going to spell doom for the side of uh, Azure. Just too much gold on that guy. And uh, Zed actually going to the top lane, relying on the wave clear from his team. Really good play. I really like this actually. Yeah, here's the engage though. Oh, and Morning Melon actually jumping forward. I don't like that. Tua pulling onto Nia, who needs to pop that Zanyas. I think he still got it online, waiting. And actually Zed, with the appropriate play still, going for that top lane. He's going to take it down. And now he's on the inhibitor. Great stuff. But Tier 2 going to go down the mid lane here. Miko forced to run. Can't, can't tell you the last time I saw Zed run from an inhibitor. Yet. Interesting decision by Azure to try and fight that. They're okay with giving up that inner tower. Maybe they thought they could get more, but not working out. Davis still has his TP, but... Interesting, interesting decision making coming from Azure. <laughs> and uh, Miko looking to continue to push up there. Viper, can he handle this? Uh oh he jumps in. Could this be the damage? He's got him cracked and he jumps on the turret, but he jumps all the way back home. He's going to use the up time. He's got the Yomu's Ghost Blade pop, but he wants to run from this one. Biofrost catches him with the ultimate. Let's see if Miko can survive this. He doesn't have ultimate online. No good. And Biofrost has, does have his Zonias, as does Feva in the mid lane. Overall, an all right trade for Frost and Azure. Nothing, nobody really coming out that much ahead. Uh, a couple kills traded that Zed is going to be down for quite a bit. We're going to have to see if uh, Azure can make something happen on that. Get control back. If not, obviously a one sided trade to the side of Frost. That pink ward they just took out has been there from like the beginning of the game. So, very impressive lifespan for that one. Though. I don't know about this. I think Zed is the right guy to send up towards that top lane. I think he's done a phenomenal job. It's just a matter of turning around with the other four characters for Frost and seeing if they can actually pick up a kill instead of just chasing the rumble down the lane. If they would have grabbed him, that would have been an amazing trade. 
So honestly, on the side of Frost, it looks like this game is just about the Zed and the Quirky. Everyone else is just going to be playing around them. It's going to be the squad protecting the Quirky, and it's going to be Zed going solo, trying to do the behind em em <laughs> enemy lines plays. Uh, it's got the items now as well, so he should be able to 1v1 most champions if he is given the opportunity. All right. I'm not sure who Gromp would be related to. I'm, trying, I'm gonna piece that one together. I'm sure everybody in the jungle has their own place and their own relatives in the league. But uh, I don't know, Musky. I think it's gonna be a little bit tough here. Azure has to get wise to the fact that Zed is wanting to be in that top lane for the rest of this game. He jumps forward. Actually, Rumble with the ultimate. I'm not sure about that, but that's gonna be down for a little while. Honestly, even though the Rumble has 11 kills, I don't think you can beat Zed even with that Zonia's. It'd be a very, very close fight, and you can see Beta seems to think differently. He wants to play very aggressively. Melon going in! Oh, and he jumps back onto AC. He gets pulled around. Morning Melon gonna go down to start things off. Nia finds two of This is two junglers about to die. Uh, he gets that speed up. AC about to go down. Omega B shut down as well. And Rumble over the wall gets that shutdown godlike for Omega B. Biofrost jumps in. Here comes Dad. Piper goes down. Massive kills. And we remember that Egg got scrambled a little bit earlier on. So he knew that wasn't going to be up. Viper just doesn't seem to be playing appropriately on this type of champion. It's not the same as something like a Zed. And uh, he needs to be there as the initial ultimates are going down. He needs to be able to control the fight while Jarvan is being locked up. That's sort of thing. He needs to drop a wall, separate the team, place his ultimate well. And I mean, that's just not happening. Uh, getting blown up and, and just positioning himself too far ahead in these fights. And he needs to start to play differently. Sure, his score is fine, but... He needs to be a big factor in these fights on the side of Azure. That's right. And Miko, you can see now, choosing a different lane to be annoying. And he's going to push that one down. Rumble comes in, though. You know Rumble wants a fight. Oh, he dodges the ultimate. Miko goes hard, though. Where's the ultimate? Legendary for Feyre. And Zed not popping his ult. Yeah, not sure about that. If he had popped it, he would have forced Fava to take, uh, to use his Zonia's, so... Interesting. Ignite not used either. I'm not sure why that turned out the way it did. However, Dragon will be secured once more by the side of University of Toronto Azure. It looks like they'll be able to pick it up here. What will the answer be from Frost? Not a whole lot. There's the kill. Nice ultimate from AC to start things off. Morning Melon gets pulled into the fray. Nia ults himself, but it's not going to be enough. Biofrost super low. Flashing in. Oh, huge Zonius. Nia goes down and picks up the kill. For Quirky, actually. Omega B goes and picks up another kill. Oh, he gets the egg out of Anivia. Almost a triple kill. Omega B. Did you, did you eat your salmon this morning? Did you did you have those fatty asses? Looks like he did. Uh, picks up some kills for himself. Really well played. Very close. If there had been a little bit more synergy on that fight, definitely could have gone the other way around. That is Dragon number three, which means more move speed for the side of University of Toronto Azure. And that, of course, is going to synergize nicely with their play style helping their Skarna get in there quicker and out quicker, helping Anivia move around a little bit. She's a very slow champion. I think the next objective is going to be focused around that Baron, as everything has pretty much been around the Dragon fights this game. Yeah, um, nobody really thinking about Baron quite yet. It's, it is a very difficult objective, and considering the fact that these team fights have been so... Uh, kind of back and forth, you don't want to risk the damage from Baron or, or the lack of uh, positioning if you're in that Baron pit, especially against the Morgana, especially against the Jarvan, Corky, Nami, just all that AoE burst, you do not want to be locked in there. So I think it's a right call to not go for something risky like Baron right now. Only 2,000 gold in the lead for Azure, this is a much different game from that first one. 40 minutes into the game and only 2,000 gold separating the teams. Of course, the Dragons are going to change the way that sways a little bit. Once again, Skarner taking advantage of his little brother. 
Lissandra in the bottom lane does not have her TP, so could be actually in a sticky situation, but we might see Ice Mage versus Ice Mage in the bottom lane. Lissandra versus Anivia. We'll see if Viper is able to uh, combo her effectively. Yeah, let's, uh, let's see how this one plays out. One thing we got to mention as well, Biofrost with that Frost Queen's plane. Really, really good way to initiate the fights. Uh, he does have a, a super long range um, snare as well, but going for the AoE from Frost Queen's claim, really, really smart way to start things up, just to be a little bit more sure about your CC. Jarvin uh, finds himself a little bit out of position here. Actually, Skarner about to collapse on him here. He needs to find his way out of that one. Flag and drags away, and Zed actually going around, picking up ward control by himself. Uh, I don't know if he'll get away from this one, but he's going to be up against the Graves, Morgana, and the Skarner, and Graves actually waits for Skarner to get behind him. Oh, actually, Omega B gets caught up here. There's the Zanya's Morning Melon with the ultimate, but it was turn ultimate from the Rumble. It's not going to be enough. Morning Melon gets caught out here, and there's the bubbly. Forced to flash over the wall, and A Favor takes a nice rocket to the head. Looks like Nico's going behind enemy lines. Oh, AC jumps into this one. Who's going to win? Oh. <laughs> wow. Wow, that healing. Too much from AC. Beautiful defend of that inhibitor. They really need to keep an eye on that. Otherwise, this game could just turn on its head. And on the flip side, it, I, I think Frost needs to kind of focus around that open objective a little bit harder. They're spending so much down around that dragon. I feel like if they're able just kind of to uh, run that top lane, if they catch their opponents out of guard, like right now there's three, four people around that bottom side of the map. They need to really start taking advantage of that top side and uh, use what they can to get that inhibitor down. And again, Jarvan looking to, towards that Baron area. He wants ward control. This could be a sign that they're going to finally go for it. 43 minutes into this game, though, the kill count extremely high, 19 to 27, and still only a 2,000 gold bleed. I can only imagine that this is going to continue to be a very balanced game. It's just a matter of who's going to finally eke out a really dominant team fight, or who's going to make the better shot calls to go for uh, some nice objectives. I really do think the team fights are going to go this way. If Anivia can position herself correctly and does have the, the ability to kind of kill the front line and control the fight, keep Corky out of the fight with a wall, something like that, and uh, prevent him from being able to follow up with his front line's ultimates, there's so much pressure from Lissandra alt, Azet alt, and of course uh, Jarvan as well. Uh-oh, Nia oh, Kyle actually. Wow. Yeah, wow. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Wow, you would think she'd be able to survive the cold a little bit better than that. But uh, Biofrost gets jumped on, A Favor with an amazing position on that ultimate. Morning Melon just getting hammered here, and Biofrost, after stealing the blue, steals the kill as well. Baron being attempted here, it could be a pretty clean one, but Anivia coming around the backside here, He's looking for Corky. This is not a good spot for Corky to be in. He looks for a kill on Biofrost, jumps over, tries to get over the enemy. It doesn't do something, it does get away. AE famous super low. Uh, Miko goes down to Biofrost. Mega B down to Viper. And this was all a big bait. They finally pick everyone up. And like I said, that's the turning point right there. Yeah, so even though Anivia wasn't there, neither was Asandra, and Corky didn't have anyone to kind of just force aggression on the opposing team. He didn't have any freedom to fight in that uh, in that enclosed jungle after everyone got picked off, so looks like they might go for the fourth dragon as well on top of that. Of course, they do have the increased recall speed. A huge swing in this game towards the side of the University of Toronto, sure. Alright, so a massive gold jump there. Taking that 2,000 gold lead that was sitting there for at least a couple of minutes and they turn it now into a 5,000 gold lead. A huge, huge jump, plus they've got the Baron buff, plus they're picking up another dragon. This is just way too much for Frost to handle. Uh, it, and a lot of that came off that Lissandra kill, just way, way out of position. And now they've got the pushing power. They're gonna do more damage to minions, and this is gonna hurt. 
Don't, don't mind the celebrate. We do need to see some big plays come out from Frost here if they want to turn this around. I mean, they've got the open inhibitor in the top lane. What are they going to be able to do? Looking for maybe a bush play here, but of course, Graves will spell that out with his W. I would put I would put a bet on this game as to how it's going to turn out. I'll bet you money on the outcome of this game. Hey, uh, you're hitting the, the, the mouse. These rocks are nice. Really, really nice. Really. All right, fighting bottom lane. AC moves in. Shutdown, though. Uh, Melon gets that kill. A favor jumping forward. He's in the back lines here. He's trying to figure something out. Zeto on the back foot. He's going to be picking himself up an inhibitor. Miko figuring things out for himself. A favor jumps in. And actually, Miko's got himself a guardian angel. So he's going to be able to at least. Here we go. A favor goes down super low. Is this enough? He drops him. Miko super low. Three man pushing bottom lane. Is Miko going to stick around? No, he opts to go back. And this is going to be a push coming out from uh, Azure, and they've got a Nexus turret under fire right now. That big boy cannon doing a lot of damage right now, and Miko has to defend. The minions are gonna pressure into them, however, they have that increased based recall if they need to go back with that Baron, we'll see. That tour on the front lines, Miko goes hard, he tries to find Biofrost, maybe not the right choice. He's gonna turn on to Viper here, he's doing a lot of damage, kills Tour, and he's still actually he's still got Guardian Angel, but on the back foot. Oh no, he's getting that speak aid here. Viper is doing a lot of damage, but he picks up that kill. He's gonna drop the egg, and what's gonna happen next? This is super tight ace for Miko. This guy is on a steamroll here. And he's teleporting top. Yeah, oh teleport God. in the top lane from Nia. Looking to make something happen against AC. He doesn't know he's there. Now he does. Okay, so AC could be in trouble here. We'll see who wins this battle. This is really important. Nia goes hard. He's dropping AC. Gets the kill. Now you got a four-man push coming in. 75 seconds on grave. This is massive. Rumble is up. He does have his ultimate. But look at all of those super minions. They're going down the mid lane. What's going to happen? All right, Rumble comes in, he wants to defend. Jarvan jumps the wall. He's looking for the kill onto A Favor. He pops the Banshee's Veil, locks him up. Zed's there in tow. Ultimate down, A Favor still got the mark on him. Is it gonna be enough damage? They drop the Rumble. Down he goes. Nexus turrets under fire, and we've got Frost going in for a death push. I cannot believe the turnaround from Frost. What a wild game. Nexus going down, and I cannot. Wow. Okay, I saw I saw Frost celebrating, and, I, and my brain couldn't process it. I was like, what the heck? How, how did they turn this around? There's no way. And take a look, Frank, at that bottom lane as well. Had they not been able to handle that, that would have been a turnaround for the side of Azure. Very, very, very close game from these guys. When do we have here, Tim? Wow. So we're going to be stepping into game three. It's a 1-1 one -one series right now in the best of five. This is absolutely nuts. What a wild game. I got to say, Miko in that one. Super impressive. What? We're going to line up game three. Stuff's good. Wow, that was a sick game. That was yeah. so sick. It went really long, but it was good. It was so good. Oh my god. Is this a prize? Is that right, too? I'm losing my voice. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. You too. Um, Simo can take more feet. It sucks that you guys have to yell so much, but it's not for us. It's like entirely on this. I yell. The, okay, well, then that's fine. But like, the, the stream audio is great. Yeah. It's this audio PA that kind of sucks. Is it picking up a lot of background stuff? It, it picks it up in a good way. Oh. Like, mm. because it's not mm. facing this way like you guys were, it picks it up in a minor way, but plays with it. That's nice. That's nice. It would have been sicker if we didn't fucking see it. Yeah, I know. You gotta tell them, just be like, don't celebrate. <laughs> but I mean, honestly, like, when they got like... So Frost is the old team. No, it sure is the old team. Oh. Jerry's the original, Frost is the B team. We'll see about that. Well, clearly Azure is more subtle. Well, it looks right. like it anyway.